Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. We are back with yet another video on a lead code problem and this time we will be solving the problem check if a parenthesis string can be valid. So let's get started. In this particular problem, we are given a parenthesis string which is a non-empty string consisting of open and closed brackets and we need to return valid if any of the following condition is true. These are the conditions given. Now there is also a string which is logged which is a binary representation consisting of only 0 and 1 and for each index i if logged of i is 1 that means we cannot change that particular bracket or parenthesis and if logged of i is 0 we can change it. We need to return true if the string s is a valid parenthesis string otherwise we return false. So here are the certain example given in the problem and the constraints with the problem. Let's first see what the problem is all about and how we can solve it. So we have taken the first example with the problem and the input as an logged string is given to us and the output is true. Now let's see why the output is true. Let's write in a way which is more clear to us. So we have index, we have bracket, we have state. Now the 0, 1 can be confusing so let's show that in a way wherein it is very easy to judge which bracket is open and which is closed. So we'll use these icons to show that. What does the state unlocked means? The state unlocked means that the bracket can be changed into any open or closed bracket according to the need of this string to make it valid. So if at the first index we change it to an open bracket from the closed bracket and we do the same for the index 4 then we can see that the string that we get now is a valid string since all the open and closed brackets are now balanced and that's why the answer is true in this particular case. Coming back to the problem and how we can solve it. Let's make one more enhancement for ourselves. We'll convert all these unlocked brackets whether they are open or closed into dot that would be very helpful now we know that what all brackets are closed and what all are open so in this problem that we see we see that there are three types of inputs that we get we get an unlocked bracket we get an open bracket and the third one is the closed bracket now remember the last two are the bracket which are closed that means they cannot be changed into the other bracket as per the need. Only the unlocked brackets can be changed. Now let's discuss each of these brackets one by one. Let's first discuss the unlocked bracket. So the unlocked bracket since it can be changed into any of the two brackets no operation will be needed because they will self balance themselves. Now let's talk about open bracket. As this is a starting bracket, no operation is required since by going from the 0th index towards the nth index, we'll first encounter an open bracket only then there will be balancing that happens at the closed bracket. Open bracket is the starting bracket. So we need not to take care of any operations here as well. Now coming to the third bracket which is the closed bracket. In this case, since this is a closing bracket, it requires an open bracket to be present and the operation to match it with an open bracket. Any closed bracket that we have needs to have an open bracket before that particular bracket so that it can be closed. So our whole attention at this point of the question should be on the closed bracket first and we'll do the same. Any closed bracket as we have seen can be closed either via open bracket or via unlocked bracket. Remember unlocked bracket can either work as an open or closed bracket depending on the condition. So for a closed bracket we do have the two options open with us. Now what would be the case if we find that there are no open bracket or unlocked bracket present for this closed bracket. Suppose if we had this at the zeroth index there won't be any open or unlocked bracket at the index before it since it is the first index or the zeroth index. What would you say about that string? In that case, we know that we have to return false since the closed bracket cannot be balanced with either open or unlocked bracket 
that means the string is not a valid string so we return false in this particular case so let's take for example in this particular case we see that the index 1 has a logged close bracket and this will get balanced with the 0th index unlocked bracket it can be changed into an open bracket and it will balance itself but when we look at the second index we do not find any open or unlocked bracket for it to balance itself and so in this case we return false so let's turn our attention on what we have learned so far we learned that for each character in the string we have to segregate them based on unlocked open and close bracket now for each case what operations are we doing if it is an unlocked bracket we are just recording the index in case of open bracket we are recording the index and in case of closed bracket we are performing the operation the operation being if the open bracket exists we use if the unlocked bracket exists we use and lastly we return false we are recording the index over here for the two cases because we need to use them in case of closed bracket now the question arises which one to give the priority for in case of open and unlocked bracket remember unlocked being a wild card which means it can be changed into either open or unlocked is more beneficial than an open bracket which is locked so we want to get rid of these open bracket as soon as possible and that's why giving priority to an open bracket which is locked is higher than giving or using this unlocked brackets so this part of close bracket is pretty much done but we are left with some of the cases of recording the indexes of open and unlocked brackets the close brackets if all gets balanced will leave us with certain cases wherein we have unlocked and open brackets and now we are not sure whether the string is valid or not since there are some open brackets and some unlocked brackets available to us now there will be three cases wherein we have the data in the record for unlocked and open bracket and we'll discuss those three cases now the first case would be wherein both unlocked and open bracket would have data in them the second case where only the unlocked will have data and the third case where only the open bracket has the data in itself forget about how we are storing this data for now we'll discuss that also in the later part of this video so in this particular case the case 3 we see that the open remains but there is nothing in the unlocked for us to match it with and pretty evidently we can say that in this particular case since the closed are now settled only open has remained that means there is no bracket for this open to get validated with so we return false coming to case 2 wherein values only remain in unlocked one and no logged open bracket remains we know that unlock can behave both as logged and unlocked on its own this means these unlocks will make a valid string and so we return true now coming to the most interesting case of open and unlocked so let's remove the other two cases in these two cases there can be two scenarios the first scenario wherein the unlocked character is before the open bracket and second wherein the unlocked character is after the open bracket let's see that with an example as well so the first one wherein the unlocked is before the open bracket it will look like this and the second will look like this now let's apply our common sense and see that in the first case if you'll see even if we change this unlocked character to closed it won't change or validate this particular string and so will return false in this particular case but in this case the unlocked character can be converted into a closed character or bracket and so will return true now let's come back to what we have learned so far we had these many operations till now now the operation that comes after this will relate to what values that remains in open and unlocked so for each open bracket we need to verify if a unlocked record exists which is after the open bracket index else we simply return false 
at the end we just need to verify whether the open bracket count is zero or not which we have seen this is the case two that we are talking about if it is zero we return true if it is not we return false the case two and case three covers this line case one covers this particular line wherein we are matching every open character or bracket with an unlocked record the only condition being the unlocked record should be after the open bracket now coming to the part wherein we decide which data structure to use so recording the index is a very important task in this particular problem the certain requirements with this particular record we need to list them down so the requirements are it should be of unlimited size since we don't know how many character will be put into each of these records there should be an optimized retrieval since we are doing the retrieval over here to check whether a data exists or not and lastly optimized removal so in this case once we use this particular open or unlocked bracket we need to remove that and similarly over here as well in this line there are multiple data structures which we can use we can use an array list we can use a linked list but using those requires add-on logic which we don't want over here we are looking for a solution which out of the box provides all this functionality which we require and the one data structure that comes to my mind at this point is stack it has a unlimited size the retrieval and the removal is easy it's push and pop and peak as well so it looks like a great choice for this particular problem now with this understanding of the problem if you are able to solve it or if you are able to get a fair idea about how to solve this particular problem then congratulations you did a great job but if you still feel like you need a dry run of this particular approach then let me show you how so we'll take a example this is a custom example so that it covers all the cases that we have discussed so far we know that we are using two stacks one for open and other for unlocked locked brackets need nothing from our end to store since we are actively choosing to balance these on the go in order to have a less confusion we will first focus our attention on the states given to us and if only the state is locked we will focus our attention on the bracket so we will start off from the zeroth index in this particular case since it is unlocked we put that index into the unlocked bucket and so it goes we move on to the index one since this is a locked we look at the bracket it is a closed bracket time to get the matching that we discussed so we have to match it either with open or unlocked open does not exist we jump to unlocked there exists a data and we take out the first data that we have in the unlocked and match it with the closed bracket. Now moving to the second index. It is unlocked. We again put that into the stack. We move ahead to index 3. It is locked but it is now a open bracket. So we put that into the stack as well. We move ahead. It's a closed bracket and it is it is a locked bracket and it is a closed one so we have to match it with either open or unlocked giving priority to open we take out the open value and we match it with the closed one we are still able to find out a matching for the closed bracket so we move ahead in this particular case it is unlocked so we put that into the unlocked stack we get a locked open bracket we put that and for the index 7 we again put that into the unlocked one up till this point we have matched all the closed brackets with their counterpart open bracket whether it was from the open one or the unlocked one doesn't make any difference to us so now the focus for us should be on these two buckets that we have and we can forget about the string given to us. We have to now match whether these open and unlocked satisfy the condition that we need. So we take out the first open bracket, we take out the first unlocked bracket, we see that the closed one 
is greater than the open one and that satisfies the condition. Now we see that the open one is empty and unlocked one has some data in it. And in this particular case, that is case two, we know that we can return true since the unlocked brackets will balance themselves out. So we just return true in this particular case. So that's about the dry running of the approach that we discussed. Now we can head back to our coding board and start coding this particular approach that we discussed at length. Starting off with what all things that we have discussed, we'll start off with creating two stacks. For simplicity, we'll take the character array for both string and locked. Now we need to simply do the for loop for each of this character and perform the operations. So now we know that they, we have three cases, the unlocked one, the open bracket, the closed bracket. So we'll first check if the bracket is unlocked. If that is the case, we simply put that into the stack. Now we are sure that the whatever character that we are getting, it is a locked character. So if the character that we get now is an open bracket, we put that into the open stack. And lastly, anything that remains will be a logged closed bracket. Over here, we need to check if the open stack size is greater than zero, then we pop the value. Also, if unlocked size is greater than zero, we pop that too. And if both are not available, then we simply return false. So this completes the for loop that we have. Now we discuss that we need to take care of the recorded indexes, both in unlocked and open. So we loop through these stacks. Now at the end, we simply need to check whether the size of the open stack is zero or not. This is to verify whether we have matched every open character, which is logged with a closed character. Unlocked one size doesn't make any sense to us. It will balance itself out. Now there is one more issue with this code. We haven't put in place to check whether the length of the string is even or not. Since a valid string will only be an even string, an odd string cannot be a valid string. So we put that into place. We check if s dot length is even or not. If it is not, we simply return false. Now let's run this code. So it ran successfully for the sample test cases. Let's submit this. So it got submitted successfully. The time complexity for this particular approach is of n since we are iterating over this string. And the space complexity in this case is also of n since there can be a string with all the logged open brackets and we are using stack to store the index of those open brackets which are logged. And same thing can happen with the unlocked as well. There is another approach with this particular problem. In that approach, we are not using any stack and it's a constant space solution still with an O of n time complexity. Do comment below if you want a video on that as well. That's all for today's video. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel and to follow us on all the social media platforms, link of which is in the description below. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.